All right, well today we're gonna to talk about um, knife size. And what I'm referring to here is blade size. Um, now most fixed blades we're talking about, you know, we're gonna have a handle between four to six inches, but this here is specifically the hotly contested subject of blade size. Now this is like, <laughs> uh, you know, the debate around many campfires, right? So. I'm going to have, you know, small, small blades, and I'm going to put sub four inches, okay? And then we're going to go medium, and we're going to go four to eight, and then large, and we're going to go eight plus. Now, one way you can test out what uh, blades actually work for you and in your climate, uh, what blade size, I should say, um, is to use your knife without any other tool, okay? Without the use of any other tool. So do not use your saw to fell, you know, trees and then do your notches or then split your wood, you know, through batoning. Use the knife the entire time. Okay, and use uh, your knife for tasks like, um, oh, you know, feather sticking, shelter craft, um, netting needles, and, uh, you know, bow drill, things like that. Now, of course, fire and shelter are your two most important out of those things. The other two skills are just, I mean, they're good skills to have, and, and they really get you used to working with a knife and those types of things, you know. Like I said, don't use your saw to cut the to cut the, the piece of wood, then baton it, and those things. So when we're talking about a small knife, you know, we're talking about uh, you know things like the the BK16, um, your Mora knives, um, you know, stuff like that. Okay. <clears throat> what you'll notice with these knives is, um, with these smaller knives, usually what you're going to have to do is find a baton to make a baton. Okay, um, because we really don't have any chopping ability to speak of. Uh, any chopping is going to be very, very laborious. Okay, so in, in, in my cl climate where I'm at, it gets very cold and it can be very wet. All right, and many times during the winter, uh, you may have a few feet of snowpack underneath you. So finding things on the ground in those situations when fire and shelter are most important um, is usually a no-go. So you're um, then left with the, you know, the option of whatever you can break or push over. And um, because it's a wet climate where I'm at, uh, small diameter uh, seasoned dead wood uh, usually is still damp on the inside. So for things like, uh, you know, friction fire and stuff, um, they may not work. You're going to have to go after the bigger rounds. Um, so if you're going to baton through a seasoned piece of, uh, you know, wood standing, and it's this big, you're going to find that that's going to be really, really difficult. And like I said, you're going to have to find a baton to make a baton. All right, here, you know, we've got knives like, we have to stick with the Beckers here at the beginning. Uh, you know, we got the BK7, the Rat7, uh, the, uh, well, let's put the BK2 in there. Of course, there's uh, you know, the SC5, uh, we got the Topps Prather Bowies in there, all right, um, oh, even, even the Buck 119, okay, which is one of my favorites, really like the Buck 119. So now we have a knife where we can do some chopping, okay, uh, it is easier, especially with the BK7, the Rat7, and the Topps, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're in the 7 inch range, uh, you know, maybe even the tops Prather were, were over seven by a little bit. So now we're getting the ability to chop, which makes a lot of things easier, um, but it'll make a lot of things a little bit more difficult, right? We're going to lose a lot of control of the knife. The smaller tasks like notching um, and, you know, uh, the, the divots for your bow drill, those things, even feathering are going to be a little bit more difficult. Now I have a video... Uh, Bowie Knives for the Woodsman. It's a series. 
And, um, you know, I do some different Bowie knives in there and I do feather sticks and things like that. There are methods, look no further than the indigenous people who seem to be able to use a large knife for everything. Uh, small trap components, um, you know, notching, things like that, game. All right. So let's look at the large knife here. Staying true to the Becker series to start, you know, the BK9. Ontario has the SP5. 10, 50, which might be discontinued now, 51, etc. Tops has a bunch of these. Cold Steel has a bunch of them. Bark River has a bunch of them. Okay. Now we don't need a baton at all to chop. Okay. Um, and now we are able to fell things in knee deep snow and, and in situations where we can't just forage for wood on the ground. Okay. So what you're going to notice is that, you know, and, and do not try this just once and say, oh, you know, okay, yeah, this knife here will work for me, right? Try it a multitude of times under a multitude of weather conditions in a multitude of different terrains, and then base your decision on what knife is going to fit your situation and your style. Now, of course, we're talking more along the lines of, you know, this proverbial, which I don't feed into because I believe every woodsman worth their salt. Uh, has, has a tool set, but what we're going to find here, um, you know, is, is that uh, blade size plays a huge role when we're talking about a one tool type of option, or as I was about to say, that whole proverbial situation of you lose your, your pack, I don't know, the bear runs off with it and shreds it, the canoe tips, whatever it is. So I hear a lot of people, oh, my one tool option, I'd be just fine with the BK-16. Well, you know, um, Morris Kahansky, I would say, uh, without a doubt, with his extremely vast knowledge, um, but for most of us mere mortals, um, I'd say maybe you're not looking at certain things realistically when you're only talking about one tool, especially in a northern climate where we need fire. And we're not talking about, you know, using your BK-16 and batoning down one piece of seasoned hardwood and section, sectioning it up, uh, you know, in a couple four-foot lengths, right? Um, great, you've got a fire for, you know, a half an hour. Keep that fire going. Like I said, in a situation like where I'm in, there is no gathering from the ground. And chances are you're not going to be able to push over or break any wood that's worth anything to get a friction fire going or to, um, you know, get your feather sticks and those types of things. Uh, if you're talking about camping and, and using enclosures with tarps and different things, you're going to want a clean burning fuel for less smoke, okay? So, um, you know, in, in these situations here, like I was saying earlier, we're going to lose certain things and gain certain things as we keep going, you know, down this list. If I could pair up, you know, certain tools, I would say a small and a large knife would, would really be great uh, as, a, as a combination. Now, I um, uh, usually prefer about a six inch blade. But I also have a tool set, and I, I encourage that. You, you can still bring your tool set to test these things out. Don't ever leave yourself, you know, undergunned out there in the, in the woods. You know, have your folding saw or your hatchet or, or whatever. But, you know, I like the medium-sized knife because I can get some light chopping done. I don't have to rely solely on finding a baton to, get, to take down saplings or tension cutting. Okay, I can still tension cut, right, with a 7-inch knife. I can bend it and just give a couple whacks. Same results. Um, but yes, I usually have some sort of hatchet, uh, an axe, things like that. Always have a folding saw in my haversack. So I have a toolkit, and once again, any woodsman worth their salt does. So figure out, like I said, realistically now. This has to be done realistically because this is all physics, okay? You can still be a great knowledgeable woodsman, but have the wrong knife for what you need to do if we're talking about this proverbial one tool option situation. Okay. And, you know, maybe you do things differently than someone else. It doesn't matter. It's all about you and what you're comfortable with as long as it's a realistic, uh, you know, type of mindset. And as you've seen and have you, as you've heard, that mindset is most important when it comes to these 72-hour survival situations and the likes. 
But as many knife enthusiasts and steel addicts, like myself and probably like you, um, you know, you know that with, with proper training, a large knife will do everything a small knife will do. And it usually isn't the other way around, unless you want to put in all that labor. Now, having said that, a lot of people like the four inch knife or the smaller knife because they say, well, it saves on calories, you know, when you're scouting, hiking, whatever it is, walking. Well, it's true, but you're going to eat those calories up when it comes time to gather wood. And the nice thing about a knife that can chop some is we can take a few whacks on, you know, three inch hardwoods, things like that, and we can kick them in half, right? We can section them smaller. You don't have to chop all the way through, but we can break them off in crotches of trees. With a small knife, it is all about your force, your strength. You have to physically break that, okay? And if you want any type of precision cutting and things like that, well, good luck to you. Um, you know, in, in more dry climates and things like that, I see people doing, you know, friction fires with the two small sticks together. Um, well, that's not going to work where I'm at. Those sticks, um, even if they're, you know, standing dead wood, are probably subpar for things like friction fire and the likes. And even feather sticks, you know, a lot of times they tend to be punky. And as I said, you're probably not pushing a lot of things down that are, you know, that would be considered good wood for a fire. Like I said, keep your fire going. Try to do all the work, not for an hour, not for two, but for longer. And on top of that, do this a multitude of times and really figure out where you're at. What knife would you be comfortable with in a, this proverbial situation of the one tool option? Okay. I don't really, like I said, uh, view that as anything real valid, but it's something to think about, you know, well, what knife would I want on my hip? And, and try these different things out. And if you're fine with the four inch and all that, and it works where you're at, or however, then that's great. You know, it takes all sorts. That's why uh, these are great campfire discussions. I have friends who like the four inch blade. I have friends who like the large. I have friends who like a medium. Um, it's all a preference. But my friends are good woodsmen, hunters, fishers, trappers, things like that. And they always have a tool set. So they're not just relying on the one tool. But it's a good exercise to really get used to your knife. Um, you'll find with a larger knife, you may have to manipulate the wood more. And I show that in some of my videos for the Bowie Knives for Woodsmen, um, where you know, we're, we're drawing the wood for feathers rather than pushing the big knife, or to make bow drill divots and the likes, where you know, we're moving the media. We're moving the wood rather than wheeled around this, this large knife, or we're holding it under the armpit and you know, bracing the blade to do different things. So it's a different mindset, and you gotta get used to it. Uh, no matter what you pick, right? You got to work with it. If you're out there with a four inch blade, uh, that's, that's all you got. You can't change it. And it's the same with this. Above all, just get good with what you're doing and what you're using and always have a realistic approach to it all. Well, thank you very much for watching and take care.